Hey YouTube, what's going on? Danny here with Danny's Tech Channel. If you haven't tuned into most of my videos, I recently built in this fractal design case a small simple computer that I had a chance and room for upgrades. Right now this is equipped with a Ryzen 5 3600 processor and a GTX 1660 Super from Nvidia. First thing I upgraded was the fans. This is the second video in this upgrade series that I want to do and it's all about the graphics card. So if you need to upgrade your graphics card, stay tuned. The graphics card that I chose for this build is none other than the ASUS RTX 3060 Tough Gaming. So what I want to do is pop this computer open, throw this card in here. I'll show you about the software that you should be getting with this card and then give you some benchmarks also. So if you have a Ryzen 5 3600 and a 1660 Super or something lower than that, this is the performance bump that you'll get when throwing this card into the computer. Let's get started. Very first thing you need to do before doing any kind of upgrades to your computer is switch it off. You need to make sure that the power supply is turned off and disconnected. If you don't have a power switch on your power supply, just unplug it, let it sit for a few minutes, you'll be good to go. Second thing, you're gonna open your side panel on here. Mine is tinted glass, and some side panels have little thumb screws that actually secure them. This one's real easy. All I have to do is pull out on it, and it hinges open like this. Then the bottom just lifts up, and it lifts away. The cool thing is, I don't even have to pick the computer up to be able to do this, that's how easy this is. Next thing you need to do is unplug the power from the graphics card. If you have a simple graphics card that doesn't require a lot of power, you may not have one of these connectors. If you have a very high-end card and you're replacing it with something else, you may have more than one. You just push down on the top tab, pull out on the plug, and it lifts away from the graphics card. Once your power is disconnected, you're gonna need to grab a screwdriver, just a Phillips screwdriver will do. Then you're gonna unscrew these two little thumb screws in the back that hold the graphics card into the case. Now some cases don't use thumb screws, mine do, a lot of the custom ones that you'll find do. This install really applies to pretty much any computer. They all work the same way. Once you get those two screws out, there's a tab in the back of your case here. There's two types of tabs. One is like a slide type, the other one's an actual push button type. This is the push button, but I've encountered both. Those are really the only two I've seen. Some of them don't have any. Some of them are just, you pull the card out. You're gonna push in on this tab and you're gonna pull out on the card from the PCI slot. You do have to kind of give it a little bit of wiggle, but it lifts right out as you can see. Now your computer is pretty much prepped for the next card. This card is way bigger than my other card. I mean, you can see the height difference of it. The uh, thickness is about the same because the ASUS card that I had in here was uh, a wider card as well but uh, definitely longer, much, much longer because of the cooler design. Now, if you didn't have a graphics card to begin with, this is where you're gonna wanna pick up from. If you removed your card, you're ready to install. If you just got your card out of the box, take a look around the card. You might have to peel off top plastic, front plastic. In fact, the little cooler fans, usually the face of that will have a plastic, uh, cover on it as well. And then any like RGB or anything, they usually install plastic covers. So just put your fingernail on the side and see if it has any plastic on it. You're gonna take your card, you're gonna line it up with the slot. Once you line it up, you just push in with some force and that lock tab will actually re-engage and hold the card in place. It's that easy. Now the next thing you're gonna do is take your screws, your retention screws here, you're just gonna run them into the graphics card again, into the new one, and that holds your bracket to kind of support it. Your card is secured, it's locked into the position there. Just grab your cable that you had for your old graphics card. Once you push on on the electrical connector, your card is all set, you're actually ready to go. You'll wanna put your side glass back on, you just push in on it and it's good to go. Now that you've plugged your graphics card in and gotten everything hooked up, I'll take it over to the test bench here. You can plug your computer back in, boot it up, and see what happens. If you haven't done this already, go to Google and type in GeForce Experience. And then the first thing you're gonna see is update drivers and optimal play settings. Click on that link and then hit download now for GeForce Experience. That's going to download the NVIDIA GeForce Experience, which looks like this. Once you do the install on it and everything, it's gonna come up with your games that you have installed, drivers, all of that stuff. 
If you don't have the right drivers for the game, it could give you a failed display or artifacting or something of that sort. So make sure you have the newest drivers for your game. You're just gonna hit express installation. It's gonna go through, it's prepared to install stuff. It's gonna delete all the old drivers that you don't need and install the newest drivers. I really love the GeForce experience because it's so easy to use. Don't be afraid if your screen flickers a little bit, it will do that every time because it's getting rid of the old driver and uploading the new driver. See how it says installation complete now, my screen pop back on, I'm good to go. Hit close, it's gonna say, it, it'll give you a little check mark and say you have the most current driver. You can even hit check for updates and it'll tell you in the bottom you have the latest GeForce game ready driver. Click the little cog wheel up in the top corner here just to verify that all your components are right and see this actually get, tells me that my components are not the way I want them to be. Uh, it's gonna show you over here, NVIDIA RTX 3060, or whatever card you end up buying, your driver version. My Ryzen 5 3600 is on here. I have 16 gigs of RAM. But you can see here, it says 1920 by 1080 at 60 hertz. This panel that I'm running on is a 144 hertz panel. So if that happens to you, what you can do is right click on your, your desktop hit NVIDIA control panel. This is going to bring up the ability to change things. You'll have this on here where it says Ultra HD. Now, because I'm using an HDMI cable to plug in my monitor, I cannot choose a different refresh rate other than 60 max because the HDMI cable I'm running only maxes out at that. But that's all you need to do with your game ready driver. It's gonna tell you, you can make sure this box is checked for updates. It'll tell you when there's updates available. Um, you can set it to automatically download driver updates if you want so that you don't have to do it on your own. I like to do things myself. But that's really it for the GeForce experience. Once you get it all loaded, you're all set. Your new graphics card is good to go. Now I know you all have to be curious, what kind of performance increase does the 3060 give you over the 1660 Super? Well, it's a lot. Let's take a look at it. All of these games were run on a three run average so that I could get a consistency between all of them. I ran four gaming benchmarks between the two cards, between the 1660 Super and the RTX 3060 on that same system to see what the difference was. And these are the results. The first game was Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I used the built-in benchmark on the highest setting and got 80.5 FPS average on the 1660 Super and 106 FPS average on the 3060. Second game I ran was Apex Legends. I got 110.3 FPS. This was on high settings and 149.8 FPS with the 3060. Rainbow Six Siege, the built-in benchmark on the ultra settings achieved 195.2 FPS for the 1660 Super and 294.5 FPS on the RTX 3060. The last game I played was Control using medium settings and it achieved 70.1 FPS on the 1660 Super and 113.5 FPS on the 3060. I am a real big advocate of upgrading your graphics card on your computer. GPUs nowadays are the biggest difference in graphical performance. It used to be CPU bottlenecking and stuff, but even on 1080p gaming, your GPU is bottlenecking you most of the time. The price also reflects the increase in performance. My 1660 Super, I, you can't find them anywhere for any kind of good prices nowadays, so I don't recommend you go out and try to buy one of these things. The RTX 3060 is really the best bang for buck performance that you can get right now. This ASUS model, the tough gaming one, should retail for around $500 USD if you can find it at that. Don't pay outrageous scalper prices on eBay or Amazon or anything of those sorts. Now I have a video I did on an EVGA model they come in at $330 USD. If you haven't checked out the video on it already, I'll leave a link below because that card is the one I recommend for everybody. It's a good price, it's a small form factor, and it's still a 3060, so it gives you the increased performance numbers that you can see in my benchmarks in this video. So that really wraps up this install video. No, I'm not giving away my GTX 1660 Super. I'm sorry, I need it for more benchmarking and more builds that I like to do for the channel. But if you wanna see more build videos or modification videos and upgrade videos, don't forget to subscribe down below and hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm so they'll recommend more videos from me to you. And as I always say, I'll see you next time on Danny's Tech Channel.
town. 